Hello and welcome to the Gen Explainers podcast. I'm here with a large, a large panel today. We have uh, Mike and Al, who you who you've seen a lot. Hi guys. Hello. Hello. But we also have Rand and Chris, who are here. And you've seen Rand. Rand's Rand's around. Yeah, you're, start, you're starting to see me a lot too. Huh? Rand Rand's going to be around. Chris, I don't know. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> if she hated this, well, let's we'll just see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. But welcome, one and all. And today. Uh, we're looking at a song that Chris has brought to us. Uh, I'll let Chris introduce it. You may have heard of the band. Go ahead, Chris. Well, Happiness is a Warm Gun, I'm choosing as my perfect song. 1968 came out on the White Album. It's a John Lennon song, but attributed to Lennon-McCartney partnership. First of all, I always feel like this is three songs. So you get you know, three for the price of one. I love that there's no intro. I hate a long intro at a song. For my ADD brain, this was just perfect song. Um, I love the first line. She's not a girl who misses much. The first half that's good. She's not a girl who misses much. Was something I was writing vaguely connected with the Oko. It was just when I was first meeting her. And these are all different segments of songs. And I just wove them all together. Different songs. Stuck them all in one piece and made like a little miniature... Uh, collage, it was. collage yeah. you collage, know, like instead of an album collage, like Pepper, this was all done in the one song. And it went through the different styles of rock, and it also was about a gun, not about heroin or anything. And in those days, I had no idea about heroin. I'd not, never seen it, nor no. knew anybody that had ever touched naive. it or taken it. Mm. Mm. The lyrics, especially the fir their first part of the song, um, they're sort of s seemingly sexual but surrealistic, kind of like a Lewis carroll -y. and especially yeah. as a child, I didn't have any idea what they're getting at. Obviously, as an adult, I can... There's a couple of conclusions I've come to that it, it could be um, creepy predator stuff because of the mirrors on the shoes, um, mm. his hands working overtime. But I don't like to think about that too much because I want to enjoy the song. Um, and then the next part where he gets into that super druggy sort of there's like a dreary waltz that it goes yeah. to when he's going down. I just love it. And then takes us out with a sort of doo-wop, uh, bang, bang, shoot, shoot. That's, you know, so, so dark and also really fun and, um, yeah. amusing. Um, the one thing that I do know from Wikipedia about the song is it took 95 takes and it's Paul's favorite song in the album. Oh. So one more thing that Paul McCartney and I have in common. <laughs> we both like mushy peas and this song. <laughs> yes. Oh, and I forgot the title. The one other thing is the title of the song. Anyway, Happiness is a Warm Gun, as I said many, many times, was from the cover of a gun magazine which George Martin had in the studio when we were making a double album. And uh, it had happiness as a warm gun on on the cover, and on the cover it had a picture of a gun that had just been shot, was smoking, you know. Yeah. And I thought, how incredible the fact that happiness is a thing, a, a warm gun that's just shot something yeah. or somebody. The play on word of happiness is a warm puppy, which was like a a thing that people said at that time. It was yeah, it was a Charles Schultz uh, yeah, yeah it was Charles Pe Peanuts. Right. Peanuts book yeah, and obviously the happiness was a warm gun could be a heroin needle or it could be sexual. Mm. I never thought of it that way. And nothing else. That's the only two options. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be a warm gun. <laughs> or it could be a gun that is warm. Yeah, exactly. That brings happiness. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> okay, the White Album's a long album, a lot of different songs. The band was diverging Shit. creatively. Let's yeah. say, and not necessarily getting along all that well, but this is a John Lennon. It's a John Lennon. It says Lennon McCartney, but well, I don't know. I wasn't there, but you know, it feels very John <laughs> Lennon to me. <laughs> it is John Lennon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's John Lennon in the best possible way, I think. Yes. Uh, I always love when John Lennon sings in that kind of low, sinister, like you know. Mm -hmm. But then, like you said, it's a bunch of different feelings in the song, like right in the song. He changes to the... The time signature changes many times throughout the song. Yeah. And and the funny thing about it is, it, because of that, I think, I mean, it's only a two minute and 44 second song. It see, it feels longer to me and not in a bad way. Yeah. It, it feels shorter to me, actually. Oh, really? 
Right. For some reason in my mind when I'm listening to it, maybe it's the mood the song is creating or the story I'm putting together in my head. It it makes it feel like maybe it's a deeper, maybe not longer, maybe it's deeper. I don't know. Um, deeper than back in the USSR, let's say. Um, <laughs> But, but anyway, not deeper than obla di obla da. Sure <laughs> well, <speak>. no. <laughs> Certainly not. <laughs> I want to remind you that we got bashed most on this podcast for for dissing uh, the Beach Boys. If <laughs> we say dear. if we say and anything I'll do it again, <laughs> if we say anything negative about this Beatles song, oh boy, Paul is going to get on, Paul is going to get on and, and bash us himself. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. We're yeah. going to catch hell. So yeah. be ve- tread very lightly, everybody. No. Anyway, I'll just say that, uh, yeah, when I listen to the album, a lot of different songs and sounds. Um, I, I, I love the Ringo ones too. But anyway, um, this one is always at the time, let's put it this way. Back in the day when I listened to it when I was younger, this was probably right in the middle for me. I was like, oh, okay, uh, happiness is a warm gun. And I didn't think too much of it because it probably was, I was younger and I wanted something catchier or something. Obliti obada. Um, as I got older, this appreciation of the song grew and uh, I, I really love the song now a lot. So that's what I'll say about it. I have a, uh, I have a confession to make Uh-oh. Um, somewhat s- shameful confession that I'll go ahead and lead with. Um, I did not grow up listening to late era Beatles. I, I only listened to like what? early, early era Beatles. Do you want me to leave right now? I'm going to see myself out. Yeah. Yeah. I, right. I think and I'm the one. Thank you I'm to the, the final podcast well it gets better Uh so so (laughs) my introduction to uh uh, late era beatles um songs from sergeant peppers and abbey road were through the oh no uh, movie no cheese peter frampton (laughs) movie sergeant peppers lonely arts club band So that was how I first heard most of those songs. Mm. And then, and then later, you know, later in life, like in college or something, then, then started listening to the actual songs. Happiness is a warm gun. Same thing. I, I know I first heard from the breeders covering it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Kim Deal's band. And I have to admit that when I hear the Beatles version, I feel like I'm hearing a cover version of the Beatles song. That's kind of the angle that I'm coming at. So <laughs> mm. again, just giving you some some context there, some background. That's where I come at it from. Um, that said, uh, this is a very, very challenging song. And I love that. I love, you know, kind of what Matt was saying, when you're younger, you maybe don't want that challenging stuff, but uh you know once you dive into challenging music this is a really good one where you're like where is this song going what you know it starts and you're like okay this is how it goes and then it changes like chris said you get three songs in one um any any artist who can take a line and just say it over and over again and and think i'm going to get away with this this is going to be okay uh is is that's challenging and when they do it well it's great and and it works in this song and it's very good uh the the first line she's not a girl who misses much i love the second line do 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 i always wonder what's going on with artists like what how purposeful that is and why they're like did they did they have another line and didn't like it or they weren't able to come up with anything what why is the second line just a bunch of nonsense? <laughs> What's going on there, John? <laughs> or or saying, yes. oh, yeah. I mean, John Lennon is, yeah, I think, yeah. traditionally guilty of getting the oh, yeahs in there. To- <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he's go-getter. Um, and then, yeah, I just, I love all the different musical styles that come in here. You have that really edgy, scratchy guitar that comes in in the second part um, that's, 
and then the the doo wop stuff at the end is in, in contrast with the with the lyrical content. Yeah, it's uh, it's very very creative songwriting, and again, not something that necessarily immediately grabs you. But if you spend time with it, or maybe it does grab you, depends on what's going on in your life. Uh, so yeah, that's that's where I come from, and so that's that's my my take on the song. All right. Well, well, for me, I'll, I'll, my my admission is that I just listened to the Beatles for the first time this week, and oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not just kidding. Um, no, I I don't really have a lot to add that hasn't been said already, except that I I just remember like I probably really listened to this album at in in its entirety probably in high school. Um, and I did it with headphones on because I had these massive headphones from Radio Shack. They were huge. <laughs> Bigger heavy, than the ones you're wearing now? <laughs> yes. They were heavy and and all this stuff and the, had the huge, huge cord. Anyway. Um, but I yeah, I, I think I listened to it. Uh I was just lying on my futon. Um You're painting and, uh, a picture and I love it. I know. Wait, <laughs> wait, wait, wait until I, get, I tell you what I was wearing. No. <laughs> nice. Um and um, so, yeah, I remember listening to it for the first time. I, I don't know if I listened to the first time with headphones, but I, I definitely I got into listening to headphones a lot. So I was used to that Beatles separation, uh, all the st- stereo sound that they that they put in uh, a lot of their later albums. Um, and which occurred a few years later, the Beatles separation. All right. The Beatles, yeah, exactly. Okay. So, yeah. So, but I don't have a whole lot to add. I mean, everybody's pretty much said the, the same thoughts I had on on the song itself. So. I'll disagree well, with Chrissy on some other stuff later. Okay. Well, what? Where did you rank it? If you listen to all, if you listen to all, I gotta ask everyone this: If you listen to all the White Album, where do you rank this song? Oh, um, I guess probably, now. Pro- probably, yeah. I was gonna say probably early on, I would rate it in the lower half, but now I rate it in the the top, <laughs> the the top half. Um, okay. So I, I'd probably say it's it's probably one of my top five from the album. Okay. Uh, no, no, you know, there's a that's lot about of tracks. Right. That's about right. Uh, there are a lot of tracks, and that's about right. For yeah. me. I think it's moved up there. So uh, I am a big, big fan of the Beatles, especially their later era, late era Beatles. And I was listening to that at a very young age. And John Lennon just so happens to be my favorite Beatle. And uh, the White Album is probably my favorite record of theirs. It is kind of all over the place, much like this song. And I, I think it uh, features some of the finest work of all of them as individuals, but also there's some interesting pairings. Like one of the reasons a song this disjointed with its time signatures and everything works is because George Harrison worked on it and, and really helped with that through his knowledge of uh, eastern music and uh, indian music he was able to help this song along all of the sort of the darkness or the archness or the like wait what direction is this song going really appeals to me and did even when i was a kid and although i probably didn't understand the implications of what was being said as much at that age uh i think i even had a little hint of it and I love the, uh, the 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 kind of screeching guitar that was kind of mentioned before in part I don't know what you call it part two of the song uh, the kind of almost bluesy weird I need a fix guitar line. I love John Lennon, and I think White Album John Lennon might be my favorite John Lennon. Uh, so uh, I would rank this very high just for this record. Top okay. five, yeah, for that record. I do like it. This was, this was also the last track on the first side when albums had sides. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I know I listened to this a lot, too, because I used to always play over and over again while my guitar gently weeps over and over and over again and this would always come right after it so that's how i'd always i'd probably listen to back to back all the time back then too yeah and for the record i will say that uh if this is paul mccartney's favorite song on this album that is something i share with him as well (laughs) i do not share his love of mushy peas at all (laughs) 
this. <laughs> so this might be it for me and Paul. <laughs> you took at my quickly notes here. You know, my notes on a Beatles song are always just the first ones always go, wow, this is really good. I feel like this song might influence a generation of musicians. Um, but um, again, I, again, I mentioned Lennon's vocals and I love, again, he does a lot of different things in this, but I just love the like fry that he gets, uh, you know, when he gets yeah. there. We hope you're enjoying this Gen Explainers podcast. Please remember to find us and follow us on social media. And we'd much appreciate a five-star rating on the podcast platform of your choice. Now, let's get back to the show. It's a really, really, really good song. But you know what? You know what the question is, though, for this podcast specifically yeah, is 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 this a perfect song? Yeah. So let's let's get on with let's get on with the voting. Chris, you brought it to us. I, I think I know the answer, but hundred percent perfect. Hundred percent perfect. She says, "Okay." Uh, how about Al? What do you think? Uh, I forgot to mention actually that I played it for my kids. Oh, right. Let's get that in there. Yeah. So my kids listen to this and as they listen to this whole batch of songs, uh, my son rated it number two, my daughter rated it number one. Mm. And, uh, I, yeah, they really liked it a lot. They liked that it was all over the place. They liked the different places it went, even though they probably don't fully understand what the (laughs) song is about. Yeah. And now I'll go to my vote. Mm. Uh, Happiness is a warm gun. 10 out of 10. No notes. Perfect song. All right. Rand. <laughs> see, this is going to be an interesting one because, see, <laughs> he's going to say the. Read the comments. Yeah, I'm, still, I'm, I'm still waiting for Peter Frampton and the Bee Gees to come. Yeah, yeah, he's <laughs> waiting. He's like, I, where? I kind of need that version in order to figure out whether it really works. <laughs> um, as I mentioned earlier, I, I did come to this song kind of in a roundabout way, like I did the entire late Beatles catalog. Um, I don't, uh, I, I think it is a, a very well put together song. You can tell where I'm going with this, can't you? <laughs> I hear you. I'm going to, I'm going to ruin, I'm going to ruin Chris's first, uh, first nomination. Um, or, or fine, whatever. It That's is what fine. it is. It is. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to say it's a very well put together song. Um, like I said, very challenging, very interesting. Um, I am not going to rank it as as perfect, though. Okay. Um, and, and that could come just from from how I, I came to it. Um, I don't know. But that is what it is. All right. Well, that you know, that's totally fair. I thought there are a lot of uh, Beatle fans that it isn't their most favorite song necessarily. Um, I also want to make an announcement. We have an opening in the panel from from now on. Rand won't be. <laughs> he has other engagements. Evidently, yeah. he's not going to be around. So, no. All right, all right, Mike. Why don't you go next? Um, yeah, I'm actually breaking one of my rules uh, for for um, perfect song on this one um, because I don't necessarily think it's timeless. Um, mm. The song itself, however. I think it's a great song, and I think that every element they put into it is amazing. So yes, I'm going to vote perfect on this one. So, but okay. I, I I do think that there's some dated kind of mood and feelings to it, and but that's just that's just my own personal take on it. So anyway, okay, and I uh, am going to say yes, it is. Uh, it is an it is an odd song. I mean, I, again, we've all heard it. Well, not we haven't all heard it. Almost all our lives, but <laughs> <laughs> perhaps you know we because we've heard it so much, um, we don't find it strange, or it just is what it is, and it lives in it lives in our minds and in our hearts as it is, and uh, and it and again, I my attitude towards it did change as I got older. But at this moment, though, yes, I I think it is it is it is perfect. So again. Uh, that guy who hated us for not liking a Beach Boys song, bring it on. Because I know you didn't really unsubscribe. <laughs> anyway. 
<laughs> anyway, there you go. It's the Beatles. It is Happiness is a Warm Gun. Uh, this is one of those bands that we could uh, probably, there's numerous songs, obviously, that we could do. Uh, maybe we'll do a special episode bringing, uh, I don't know, maybe we have to do a, a ranking of 10 or something or of like all, It's even that's hard for the Beatles. But anyway, we did it because we're not afraid. And I want to thank Chris for bringing the song. Uh, and I want to thank everyone on the panel, and I want to thank everyone for listening. And uh, say goodbye, everybody. Farewell. Bye. Farewell. Bye. We'll see you next time.